part two of this post-production video, we're going to go into kind of um, how to take an image that you have from Rhino or rendering or V-Ray and essentially do some post-production. So we're going to go to File, Open. Uh, we're going to find out the location of that rendering that we have. And I have it right here. This is the um, rendering that I have from Rhino. And it's a very basic rendering. It doesn't look that great. It doesn't look that realistic. But how can you make it look a little bit better, right? Um, so I brought this image in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this layer. So I'm going to double click. I'm just going to call this a uh, render image per center. Now it's unlocked. Uh, right after this, I'm actually going to go to my image and I'm going to go to um, my canvas size. Now, if you look at my canvas size, it's 17 inches by 12 inches. And oh, that's kind of a weird number. I want it to be 8.5 by 11. So I'm going to go to 11. And for the height, I'm going to do 8.5. Press OK. Proceed. And then you'll realize that it you know, made it smaller. And then I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to transform it so that it kind of fits into um, the resized kind of canvas that I have so far. Press enter. And then I'll go back to image and I'll go to image size just to make sure is my resolution still OK. And yeah, it's 150 DPI and you know that's fine for what we're doing, I think. Let's go to OK. So now the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to delete this gray background. Um, I don't really need it. And um, of course, we're going to put a sky in the background, etc. So we're going to go to this tool right here. It's called the Magic Wand Tool. Magic Wand Tool. Now, if you look over here, you have these different options. Um, this is the tolerance. This is the most important thing. For example, if I have a tolerance that's very high, like 250, for example, everything that's gray, it's going to want to select almost everything that's a similar gray. So if I select this, it actually selected the entire image. So my tolerance is way too high. So if I go to 5, for example, it's only going to select that one shade of gray. It's not going to select everything. So I click it and it selected everything that was gray and everything that was that same tone. And I'll press delete. So almost immediately, I was able to delete that background or whatever I didn't want. So that's a very, very effective tool in terms of rendering. Um, so now that this is done, we're going to do some quick image editing. So we're going to go to image, we're going to go to adjustments, and we're going to start to edit the brightness and contrast. Now this is something that you just kind of do by yourself uh, and kind of how you want the rendering to look or what kind of mood you want it to have. And let's say I just want it to have higher contrast and maybe be a little bit darker, so that's okay. And then there's also other options like, you know, vibrance, hue saturation. So if you want to make it a little bit you know, more vibrant or if you want it to be like a very less saturated, you know, so it's completely up to you. That looks good. So now that this is done, we have a transparent background. Uh, if you look right here, it's a transparent background. So we're going to add some foliage in the background, some trees. Um, so we're going to go to Google. And uh, we'll just type something like a uh, tree line uh, PNG. And these are kind of the images that come up, for example. So this is like a tree line in the background, you know, the foreground or background of an image. Let's say we have this. So it's going to go to Open Image and Tab. I'm going to copy this image. And then I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to do Paste, Edit Paste. And then I'm just going to scale it to a reasonable size. So let's say we have this in our background, right? I'm going to place it underneath my image. So if you look, this is above the image and this is underneath the image. So this is important in terms of understanding kind of that workflow and things like that. So now that we have this in the background, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete the sky that we have. So I'm going to go to back to my wand tool. I'm going to take my tolerance as, you know, maybe um, three. No, that's too low. You'll realize that's not selecting the entire sky. So we're going to go to a 10. It's a little bit better. Let's try like a 15. Okay, much better. I'll press delete. So now we've kind of deleted that and we have this kind of tree line in the background and we're going to make it a little bit darker. So we're going to go to edit image adjustments, brightness, and we're going to make the brightness a little bit darker, darker. It should be okay. And if you look right here, the rendering is uh, not as great as I'd like. Um, so we can actually go back and kind of modify that too. So let's go ahead and go to the right selection tool. And let's go ahead and delete some of that uh, grass that we have from our rendering. Um, I'm not really liking how that looks. We're going to go there. We're going to go to a rendering layer. We're going to delete that. So now we have this clean horizontal line in the background. Um, so now we're going to actually get some grass. So we'll go to grass uh, PNG. And then we have some grass fields, for example, like this kind of texture, this kind of pattern. I'm actually going to take something like this. 
and um, or something like this. This looks a lot better. I'm going to right click, copy image, and bring this into Photoshop. And you realize this grass is a lot more believable than the grass that we have right here. You know, this just looks like, I don't know, some clay or something. So we'll take this and we're going to put this behind our image and just to see how it kind of looks in the background. So that looks pretty good. Um, so let's scale this up slightly larger. Control T. And now that I have this, I'm going to go to my selection tool, select it, and I'm going to copy it again, just to kind of copy it over. And now that these three are together, I'm going to merge these together. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in merge layer. And I'm going to call this, you know, grass. And just for this part, I'm going to actually lower the opacity. And I'm going to see, okay, where does this grass overlap with the house? Now if I zoom in, I'm going to go to my polygon lasso tool right here. And I'm going to select all the area that the grass is sitting above my image. So I'm just selecting the polygon lasso tool. And then I, if I double click, it'll close that loop. So one, two. So I have this area. So then I'll go back to a higher opacity. And now what I'll do is I will delete this. So now you'll see that the grass kind of sits perfectly um, up against this house. And this grass is too bright, so I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, uh, Brightness Contrast, and just kind of I'll lower the brightness a little bit, right? <clears throat> okay, great. So that's done. Now I still want this grass in the background as well, so I'm going to continue to do that. I'm just going to Control V because I still have it copied from before. And then I'm going to make sure to scale it smaller because as you know, grass, you know, gets smaller and finer as it goes further away. I'm just going to keep on doing that until a point that I have my entire background um, kind of covered with this grass. There we go. That's good. And then once again, you know, I'm going to merge these layers. I'm just going to merge these three together. And an important thing is if you look at, look close enough, you'll realize that you'll start to see some of the seams. So we're going to go to the eraser tool. We're going to go to uh, like a 28 blur or a 48 blur. We're going to slightly blur uh, some of these images. So that way the blur effect is a little bit stronger. Um, same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of blur this a little bit. So that looks a little bit better. And then I'll lower the opacity again. Um, I'm going to go back to the house and I'm going to select the areas that I want to delete. So once again, very similar in terms of what areas I want to keep and what areas I want to delete. And then go back and then delete. There we go. Then just edit the image again, lower the brightness a little bit. That's good. My tree line, I'm going to move it a little bit further down to give it that effect. <clears throat> now I'm going to merge my grasses together, rename it uh, grass. And the next thing I'm going to do is, now that if you look at this grass, uh, you realize that this is way too bright for something that's so close to the house. So there's another tool right here. It's actually called the burn tool. So if you click right here, there's a burn tool. And then you have things like what size you want the burn to be. I'll, I'll make it 300, or 300 is good. And you have exposure, things like that. And I'm going to go to my grass, and I'm actually going to start to make the grass darker. So the, I, the more I press this, you'll realize that it's going to kind of burn the image and make it darker. So that's really useful because, like for example, where you would start to have... Um, Grass is not exactly always perfect, so what I recommend is burning it and kind of making it darker in certain areas to give it the effect that, you know, this is a real type of grass that we're working with and that there's shadows on it and things like that. And I'll also use the burn on the house a little bit. For example, the front patio, it might be too bright. So I'm just kind of burning um, some areas and making it uh, slightly darker just to give it that kind of effect. Great, so now we have this, and you can tell that this is a lot better than what we had before, right? So now we have this grass as well. And um, 